it began and will never end. When we keep our attention on this energy, we rest as the creator. And through our thoughts, we consciously create our reality. We take energy and it manifests as form. Thought forms, concepts, beliefs, that then manifest as your experience of reality. If we pay too much attention to these creations, to the form, we lose our connection, our conscious connection to the formless energy that we are. And then we become involved in our story, in our creation, and we almost believe it's real. And of course, that's the fun part. When you go to a movie, or when you go on an amusement park ride, you like to pretend it's real for the thrill of it. But if you really thought riding on that roller coaster was real, and you could, you were in a car going over a hill like that, without the protective devices, it would be terrifying. So part of being awake is knowing that this reality that we create through our thoughts is not real. And all that is real is who we are, the creator creating it. The pure energy before form. That formlessness, that emptiness that the Buddha pointed to. And when we keep our attention and focus on there, instead of on the thoughts, we are resting resting in mastery. We're in this, what is called an enlightened state of conscious co-creation of each moment of this dream that we're dreaming. Every night when you go to sleep, you dream. Who creates this dream? It's the same in this dream. But waking up to this dream, it doesn't invalidate this dream. What it does is it takes you to what some people call fifth dimension, fourth dimension. They call this third dimension. But what it really does is it, it awakens the dreamer so that you're lucid dreaming. You know that you're dreaming. And suddenly the dream takes on a whole other level where you're consciously creating and you realize you think of something and it appears. You think I need a new pair of glasses that are black and look like a movie director's, and they appear. <laughs> Thank you, Marlies. You see, it truly works this way. If you start to judge yourself or your loved ones, you'll see that judgment come back to you. Whatever you are projecting on them will will be reflected back to you once you're at this level of conscious creation. That's why Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged. Because you're looking in a mirror, judging yourself. By the way, please stop looking in mirrors and judging your forms. The forms change. They're constantly changing. It's like you pick a flower, you put the flower in the vase, and you watch it decompose. That's basically what's going on with these beautiful bodies. They're in a state of decom decomposition. Now, there are some people who are putting a lot of energy into reviving it and keeping it alive and youthful, and that's wonderful. But if it's your priority, then you have got lost in the form. You're not resting in that formless, unchanging energy that is timeless and does not age. So who cares if the body ages? And I'll let you know, all you young people, it does. And it sucks. <laughs> Just like your car getting old and breaking down and having to go to the mechanic, it sucks. But that's the time game that we're playing there. Now, can these bodies become immortal? Perhaps. They say Babaji is, people try for, I don't need to. Just like I don't need to drive the same car my whole life. I don't need to be married to the same person my whole life. I don't even need to be the same personality my whole life. I've had about five different lifetimes. I'm ready for the next one. Let's go. Freedom. I love your t-shirt, by the way. Yeah, it does 
Stand up, show me. See? Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. American flag. There's so many levels of freedom. There's a level of freedom for you to just be able to lift up your shirt like that. You see, some people, I'd ask them to do it, and they'd be like the worst thing in the world. Like that. Right? And some women as well, because of the cultural differences we have here. But what's that about? That's a whole different story. That's like the men don't want to have to like be distracted by the gorgeous bosoms. Which are the bosoms that nurture us. These bosoms should be celebrated, not hidden away. <laughs> but that comes from an unconscious mind. The men who have made the rules up in this life, in this world, and we are changing them. Because those rules are based in a patriarchal society where there's one authority, God, who controls everything else. But we've realized that's not the case. We are one God. One God consciousness co-creating our reality. So how it shows up as divine masculine, divine feminine, those are just the flavors. It's the divine you want to keep your focus on, not the gender. Because the gender is part of the form. The formlessness is the divine. So as divine masculine and divine feminine being balanced in one body, which is my goal, which is my dharma, in doing so, God goddess comes to us. God gives, Goddess receives. God creates, Goddess witnesses. That state of stillness and witnessing is actually the creative process. People think creation is doing, chasing, making happen, hustling, especially in this city. Yeah. Everyone's hustling, rushing. I was like, where is everyone rushing to on a Sunday morning? It was like driving in a racetrack this morning. <laughs> It's like some video game dodging in between the hands. I'm like, where is everyone rushing? I'm rushing out to church. Where are you guys rushing out to? And of course, with the time change, we all got confused. Thank you all for being here with the time change. We did it. This time change just gives you another sense of how relative time is, how completely subjective it is. There's no absolute. Do you get it? Time is not absolute. Time is relative. Hello, ladies. Time is relative. So when you're in time, you're in the form. You're in the relative world. The formlessness is the absolute. So that's all we're pointing to here at the source, is a vine is the absolute. Don't get caught up in the relative. And don't get caught up in your relatives. You know what that's like. Every time you get caught up in your relative story, it's a drop, right? Because why? That's the channel you grew up with. Whatever channel you grew up with, you're going to co-create that over and over until you become conscious and say, enough. I want to create a new story. And the story that we're creating here collectively at the source is one of an enlightened planetary civilization where each of us take full responsibility for our reality and recognize that we are co-creating this moment together. And the only way to truly change it is from the absolute, that pure, formless awareness that we are. And as we watch our thoughts and our beliefs, we see them and we shift them and watch the outer reflection shift in but again, how it happens, the outer reflection, don't be so attached to the results any more than you are in your dream. Let it flow. Enjoy it. Get some variety in your life. Don't be chasing the same high all the time because that's what feels good. You miss a whole aspect of life that feels bad that really feels good. If you let it, you understand there is no bad or good in this state of formless consciousness. There's only isness. And what your mind perceives as bad is might be exactly the bitter medicine that you need to wake up. 
don't be afraid of it. Because remember, you created it to begin with. Are you with me? Yes. So that's called being awake. And if enough of us raise to this vibration, we can shift this planet to become a much more paradise. Look at these goddesses I'm surrounded, including purple. I want to thank everyone right now for the musical journey that we're on, starting with Athena, who's our maestro of our And then, of course, Annalisa Balfour Couchman, co founder of The Source, who leads us in meditation. <laughs> and my name is Prasad. Prasad! And I'm here to serve you. I was born to serve, I was born to assist in the midwifery of this enlightened planet planetary civilization, this new paradigm that's happening. I am one of the pioneers who find the awakened beings. Maybe if you're lost even, you might find me. And in that, we remember who we are. And we call off the search. And we stop looking outside ourselves for the answer. And we recognize that it's within. And I reflect you in that because I am doubtless of who I am. I have realized myself as God, and I'm living in this truth in every moment. And if you want to crucify me, go ahead. Because I've been had worse. I grew up with an alcoholic father, abusive, angry, with unprocessed feelings from World War II. I grew up with a codependent mother with seven children who didn't have enough to give to this crazy one who is different than everyone else. I grew up with six brothers and six, uh, or three brothers and three sisters. It was like growing up in the Brady Bunch, but I was Alice. I was always different, and I hated myself for it. And then one day I realized that that difference was my doorway to freedom. And I stopped looking outside myself for approval from my father, my mother, or anyone. And I laid down my head at the feet of my guru, Papaji, and I melted into nothingness. And in that nothingness, I realized I was just dreaming. <laughs> and I'm over it. I don't need to have a self-loathing nightmare anymore. My life is now transformed into love and bliss and joy just for who I am, not for what I do. And if you don't like me, that's your problem, not mine. You get it? Do you get it? Love yourself and everyone will love you back. So all those places where someone's judging you, don't waste your time looking at the form. Tune in and say, what is it about me that I need to shift if I'm not comfortable with what's going on outside of me, instead of asking the people outside of you to shift. That's called a control freak, a dominator. The world is filled with them, mostly men, but there are plenty of women who are imitating the men. They got fooled. They got fooled that women's lib meant that you were supposed to go out and take a job and compete with men so that you become a new taxpayer so that the government and the powers that be, the banksters, get to take you out of the home where you should be paid to raise beautiful children like this. And I promise you, all these goddesses behind me, because I know them well, they don't want to have to go to the workforce and work for minimum wage to come home and pay taxes, 30, 40% of the taxes. They want to stay home, create art, dance, and raise beautiful children, am I right? So just because they say it's good in the papers doesn't mean feminist, feminism in and of itself is good. It's what you are, self-empowered God goddesses who happen to be in a woman's body this lifetime. I happen to be in a man's body this lifetime. 
My last lifetime, it was a woman's body. It's fun to switch around, don't get attached. <laughs> there are a few people who can't wait until their next lifetime. They're like, oh God, I'm a woman, I'm a woman. Let me go get plastic surgery and change it up. What? More power to you. But you can be a woman or a man with the opposite person's body. It doesn't matter. Do you follow what I'm saying? It's the divine energy that we are, the formless energy. It doesn't matter the form. So just be aware when the form becomes too enticing, because it will, because we're getting to the third dimension where the form is going to be more and more bright and ascended in our light bodies. But remember who we are as nothing, as pure emptiness, and rest in that stillness and witness your life unfolding. Don't try to control it. That's the invitation. As Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. He wasn't speaking to a God outside of himself. It was his ego body, his pain body that was freaking out, that let go and said, this is exactly where I need to be right now, as much as it hurts. That surrender. So I ask you to say a prayer with me. Our future in this church is unknown. Our lease is finished at the end of this month. I am living in complete surrender of what the next month will bring. And I ask you all now to send love and light to the perverted owners of this building, the people who just happen to buy it from a bank at a very low price and are trying to make a lot of money on it and are not the proper caregivers for caretakers for this building. That's why Annalisa and I stepped in. And now I ask you to send light and love to these owners so that they'll know that this is where we belong. And that we also attract into our midst, there might be someone amongst us now, who has the money to perhaps purchase this church and protect it and keep it in the family, keep it in its purpose of serving the people in their awakening. So send your light and your love to that so that we can make sure that this church remains a church and not an office building or not an empty building. It was empty for a year and a half before we moved in. That's a shame for such a beautiful building. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for bringing your presence here and your friends and your relatives. Keep sharing the, the word, keep sharing the light. And if you can't give anything, we ask you to make a contribution at this time before we go into the final music. Because that's also what helps. It helps.